One of the questions that started appearing in medical interviews more frequently is why are there so few female surgeons and what can we do about it? Hi there everyone, my name's Ollie. I'm a third year medical student studying at the University of Warwick in the United Kingdom. So for quite a few years now, it's been the case that female medical students and therefore medical graduates actually not insignificantly outnumber males. In 2016, for example, um, women actually made up 58% of all medical and dental graduates. In that same year, however, when this was measured in 2016, females only made up 11%, you know, just over a tenth of consultant surgeons working within the NHS. And so essentially, despite this increase in the number of female medical graduates that there are, we haven't seen the same reflected in the number of consultant surgeons. And essentially, while the number of female graduates that are choosing to go into surgical training is going up, an enormous amount of progress still needs to be made in order to reach parity and just generally make these figures a bit more equitable. So firstly, and potentially most importantly, is the lack of role models and mentors. In a field that's largely dominated by men, it's simply statistically more unlikely for a female to find someone that she identifies with and looks up to, of the same sex of course, because it's not to suggest that men can't be really good mentors for women and women can't be really good mentors for men, I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm just suggesting that you're more likely to want to aspire to be like someone potentially of the same sex because you can relate to them more, simply due to the different challenges that men and women can face within society. And practically speaking, we can actually see this difference most within the different surgical specialties. So as of 2019, approximately 25% of all paediatric surgeons, that is surgeons who operate on children, were female, but only 6% of orthopaedic surgeons, people who deal with problems of the bones, muscles and joints. And then this state of affairs obviously becomes circular unless there's some sort of intervention because women lack the role models and then are less likely to choose to go into the specialty, which means you get fewer people training up and coming out as consultants, so you've got fewer role models and so on and so forth. Another issue can come from the very long and very demanding surgical training programs, which are often pretty inflexible. And it's really important to know that training with reduced hours, this is sometimes known as less than full-time training or or LTFT in shorthand. While in theory, in many circumstances, this pattern of training is available should someone look for it, many women have reported feeling that LTFT can actually cause them problems personally, professionally, maybe feel that it's looked down upon by the training programs, by the Royal Colleges, by the training programs, by the Royal Colleges, and potentially the people that are gonna be recruiting them or looking after their training in the future. And not just those people, but their, their colleagues as well, because one of the real key things within the NHS is when it's felt that someone is not pulling their weight, as it were, that's really felt by the rest of the team because there's a huge amount of responsibility and burden. Obviously, if someone's going less than full time to pursue other things or have a family, whatever they want to do, there are really good reasons why people go less than full time their colleagues might not always appreciate that. It's just one of those practicalities of the public sector, unfortunately. And this has been shown to have long-term career impacts for women as well. There was a recent paper um, published, which I'll link in the video description, looking at the pass rates for the American surgical board exams. And what this paper showed was that actually single female surgeons quite reliably outperform their male colleagues when you give them the same exam. So clearly there's not a problem with ability or kind of inherent knowledge or ability to do well because women are actually doing better than men under the same circumstances. However, if a woman becomes partnered, since she acquires a partner or gets married, there's a significant change. This actually switches, so a woman in that situation will on average be outperformed by her male colleagues. And then that gap in performance increases even further when a woman chooses to have children. But at the same time, male pass rates remain pretty much unaffected statistically, whether or not they're partnered, whether or not they have children. Which obviously raises a really interesting question, like what's happening? Because the women are super smart, clearly they're doing super well. So is it some cultural or societal thing that's going on? 
probably. Something we also need to think about is taking a hard line stance against discriminatory behaviour that's seen in the workplace, as well as in wider society, I suppose. Whether that's intentional discriminatory behaviour or otherwise. Because women are often far more concerned about repercussions for speaking up and being seen as aggressive or loud or causing problems than men are. And what this leads to is a lot of misbehaviour from male colleagues, discrimination, intimidation, sexual harassment particularly, actually going unreported because these women don't want to be seen as making a fuss. Even though it would be a perfectly legitimate thing to complain about and to raise with management, they don't want to be seen as a problem. So the status quo remains. So there's just some things to think about if it comes up in your interview and obviously just thinking about it going forward is really important as well. There remains a huge amount of ground to be made up to get more equality between the number of female and male surgeons, and this will revolve around the changing of personal and professional behaviours on the part of everyone, basically. There's also a need for creation of more initiatives promoting both women as surgeons and as leaders within the NHS, not only in order to improve parity, but to create those role models in positions of power as well. And lastly, I think one for the dudes, is becoming more mindful of things like taking paternal leave and doing what we can to promote parity as well making sure that everyone gets heard in meetings, everyone is interviewed properly according to proper protocol, and we try and remove inherent bias and nepotism where we can. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more videos in this interview course. Is what I said fair? Unfair? Do you have suggestions, things I could add? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you, particularly on an important issue like this. Thanks for watching guys, there are three ways you can support the channel. The first is by subscribing to the channel and sharing the videos with a friend. Second, if you found it useful, you can buy me a coffee on my Ko-Fi link in the video description below. And the third is you can use my referral link to save 10% off your first year subscription to Complete Anatomy 2020, my favorite 3D anatomy revision software. Take care and I'll see you next time.